Well, maybe in Franklin. Thanks very much for being here. And so if you'd like to address us, please feel free to come out every morning you'd like. Yeah. Hello. So I first wanted to say I want to very much thank the HRC for making this, you know, police review four day thing. Uh, it's absolutely something that is needed in DeKalb, and it's something that you all jumped on before places like Rockford even got to it. So a pat on the back all around for that. Thank you for all your hard work and researching it and all the things you had to do for it. Um, this being said, I believe there are a few ways that it could be better. Um, I know that you all want to make it as good as it can be. Um, that's why it's in your agenda. That's why we're talking about it now. Um, but especially with the lack of, well, because I know there is a state law about to be passed regarding the identity portion, there being an anonymous option here, right? Mm -hmm. And I think regardless of whether that passes or not, it should very much also be a part of DeKalb's specific rendition of it, because we can't count on the state to do things necessarily, right? I have the feeling it'll probably be passed and signed. I have a good feeling. But in marketing this out to the community, I feel like it would be best to explicitly state that if bringing it public would be a barrier to you using this police review board, that there can be that anonymous option. Does that make sense? Because like, even if you make it a thing, I, I know that my you know, friend here, Eric, is going to talk about you know how marketing these things can be somewhat difficult. He's pretty researched on it, so I don't want to type you up to the you guys. Um, that that has been an issue in the past. And speaking, sorry. Could you clarify what? I, I, I sort of missed something along the way there. That's really okay. Thank um, you. What is the state proposed? What's the state proposed statute, and what are you? So I'm not a legal expert myself, but from my understanding, there is going to be some sort of state law regarding. I mean, I was you know handed yeah. this back in about five minutes. May I, may I clarify that? Oh, yeah, if you, if someone could clarify, that would be I, amazing. Okay. In the handout, in one of the in one of the handouts, <coughs> We've, we've been, I understand it was a struggle at the last city council meeting. Um, this one that starts off, uh, if you go back <laughs> a few pages from filing a complaint against the Chicago cop, you wouldn't have to sign your name to it under a proposed law. Okay? If you go back uh, two pages, Go back. I mean, just turn flip. Just turn flip. Yeah, yeah. You'll see another heading. Another. This is a, a brief, important but less publicized changes in police reform bill. You see that? Okay. Addison, Bidolfo, Hassenball, and Castaldo is a legal firm that represents over 400 municipalities in Illinois. It's in Naperville, and. Uh, and, and I'm just going to highlight a couple of things that's in this article, okay? Um, it talks about, you know, the legislation that, that, that was passed in the General Assembly and, 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 and in the legislature this year. Tucked into the 700, I'm, I'm just taking some phrases from this first paragraph, okay? Tucked into the 764-page piece of legislation with several other provisions, that will also affect how municipal police departments operate. These changes will take effect July 1st, 2001. Now, if we go down three paragraphs, the process for filing and adjudicating complaints has changed as well. The Uniform Peace Officers Disciplinary Act, and then the numbers, no longer requires a sworn affidavit in order to file a complaint against a police officer. However, if a collective bargaining agreement currently requires legal documentation by a complaint flyer, that requirement remains in effect until a new contract begins. Another change provides that an accused officer is no longer entitled to learn the name of the person who filed the complaint or the name, rank, and unit of the investigating officer. Additionally, starting in 2023, Anonymous complaints can be made to the Illinois Law Enforcement Training Board, which may then investigate and file a complaint on its own. So I, I don't want to. So, so the law currently? I believe so, as of July okay. 1st. 
Right. And so and so I think, and as much as you know, city council and so forth, you know, has sort of you know agonized over whether to entertain, whether we're able to entertain, on you know, unsworn complaints. I I think it may be a moot point because I think the state already passed that law. So. To make sure I understand correctly, right now someone could go to the citizens review board. You know, once it's passed, because I understand that it's well. Not actually, as I understand this, and I'm not exactly okay. about this because I'm not a legal expert. Sure, me too. I, I I think what we have to do is we have to look at the collective bargaining agreement between the police department and the city of Dekel. Okay, and. And, 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 and if, if, it, if part of that agreement, it says that, you know, complaints have to be sworn and so forth and so on, then that would be in effect, I think, until that agreement is then renegotiated. You know, whenever, and I don't know when that expires. End of 22. End of yeah. 22. Um, but anyway, it, it's, it seems as though lacking that agreement, um, we can't require we, we can require sworn on affidavits. Okay, so now if I'm wrong, <laughs> right? And I agree with everything you said, and I may be wrong, but I think we ought to consult with our city attorney yeah. to find out whether in fact that's that's already true. Yeah, I think. Well, yeah, no, step one, figure it out, right? Definitely, I think we can all agree on that. Figure out what's actually going on. Um, step two, though, is because like I, Melana, and I had sat down at one point and read the first reading of this review board draft like in the city council agenda. We read the first and the second reading to the word, took notes, kind of tiring experience. About but seven times over. About <laughs> seven times over, right? And the, the phrase that stood out to us and to a lot of other people in reading the same thing that you know, came to the city council meeting were the words, um, all com like, complaints must be made public. And so looking at that actual legislation and then bringing our comments and then learning from you know city manager Bill Nicholas about the fact that this was a thing was confusing, um, to say the least. And it definitely marketed it in a way where, you know, I might not have come forward because I know, and here's the other thing, uh, unfortunately I believe there's a great deal of trust that needs to be repaired between the police department and, you know, the people in the scheme, you know. That's what the HOC is all about, repairing trust. For the I know of people that have had their you know, tires slashed in the middle of the night and then their car towed for petty reasons. I have heard not great things that the police department has done, frankly, and I'm not gonna, because I could, I could list things for a long time and it's not productive. Point being what I said was bad, the other things are bad, and they are scared to come forward. Um, they're scared to come forward because they know um, that when they do, nothing happens. I know of someone who has, you know, peacefully protested um, outside the department or whatever. They were charged with, you know, intimidation. They were charged with conspiracy. And I suppose, you know, you inviting other people to hold signs is conspiracy when holding a sign is intimidation. But this is a person that donates a lot of things in the community and very much cares. And it's not, what, they weren't armed. The police are armed. How can you? Regardless, there are a lot of infractions right there, right, where they don't feel like it's even worth it to come up and say anything. And that's what this police review board can really fix. Um, but it takes it takes some more, you know, teeth potentially. And I, 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 on top of the anonymity things, I want to. I'm sorry, my mask is breaking here. I want to encourage the um, board to con potentially consider the people on the board having some sort of voting power and disciplinary matters, because from the people that I've talked to on the street, um, they don't trust the police department to deal with it internally. I know the chief is new. That isn't something that occurs to people when they, that trust isn't repaired. You see what I'm saying? Like, this review board is something that can make people feel confident enough to weed out any bad apples up there. There, I know those words are used a lot of bad apples, and I know that's what this board wants to do is we have those bad apples that are there. Um, I, I sadly personally know of a few that are there. I'm not going to name names, it's not the point of this right now, right? Um, what I want to impress is that at the end of the day, 
I, I, I know the human rights, you know, the HRC wants this too, but you should recommend to city council something that will repair that trust. And as I said, making clear in its marketing that anonymity is possible does a great deal to repair that trust because otherwise people, you know, might think the police department will unilaterally declare war on them, which is not something that inspires you to come forward with a complaint, naturally. And on top of that, if they see that the community is involved in the process, especially what happened after with, um, you know, Officer Reese, I'm, I'm imagining people are familiar with that incident, probably painfully so on this board, um, that it felt like a, not a whole lot happened. You know, eventually he just resigned. It wasn't the system that held him accountable, it was just the public, you know, expressing their intent that he should resign. The public shouldn't have to do that to get justice. Frankly, I don't think anyone wanted to see all the things that happened when it should just have been dealt with at the very institution that we're supposed to trust. Um, I'm happy to take questions about you know anything I just said because that was a lot and probably very fast as well. I will point out, uh, and I can't, I can't speak to the question of a few bad apples or bad. I I I I, I don't know. You know. I'm glad. You know. I, I'm That's great. Anyway. That, no, but but I will point out that you mentioned that the. Uh, the police chief is new. Sure. Um, and we have, I'm not sure, uh, Josh would know probably whether we have eight or nine or ten mm -hmm. officers that are that have, that have been replaced in the last year. Sure. Some have retired, some have gone on, chosen other careers, some have yeah. gone to other cities and so forth and so on. But, and that's out of about 82 or 83 or 84 sworn officers. So there's been, in addition, in addition, to, in addition to the police chief, there's been there's been, you know, a, a fairly substantial turnover in, in, in the staff as well. Sure, no, I've heard about that. Yeah, and I guess, I guess my point being, I don't believe that that those. And, and thank you for you know oh, sure, these sure. changes, but I don't think that really changes the root problem necessarily because for one thing, the public doesn't necessarily know that. Sure. You know, and if if they see a human rights commission where now outside person votes, where they might think that they can't be anonymous if there's an infraction that they want to keep on the down low, then I don't think that this human rights, you know, police, or police review commission, I'm probably getting that initialism slightly wrong, but you don't know what I'm talking about, um, will be, we'll do what you want it to do. Because right now, if something bad happened to me, I could simply go to the, you know, the station and report it, and, and, and my own, and the experience that I know others have had, nothing becomes of it. So if this is going to be perceived as just another internal audit thing, it's not going to go anywhere. The same old problems are going to be there, if that makes sense. Well, and, and I, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't mean to be competitive about this, but, no, absolutely. but I'm not discussion. sure, but I'm not sure if, if, you, if, if you're saying right now, mm -hmm. help me see this, that um, if you were to make a complaint right now, you know, you don't have much faith um, that that would really be followed up or that would change very much. Yes. And, and how, how would that change if you were to make an anonymous complaint? Well, because frankly, right now you have to go to the police department and tell one of the colleagues of the person you're accusing. Okay. Right. That um, you have an issue. And I'm not even going to blame the person you tell. If you work with someone on the regular, you're going to have a more favorable opinion of them. You're going to have a little bit of cloud on eyes, right? That's just human nature. I'm not making any indictment of anyone. That's just how that works. Mm -hmm. Which is why I know a lot of people that have done that have then seen it not go anywhere. No, I'm just I'm, I'm just thinking loud here. I'm not sure. Challenge you on this, but you can challenge. If you were to, <laughs> but um, I just like to say you, you can to, work with people and not think favorably of them. Yes. I don't want to say that. But if you were, well, that's true too. <coughs> but see, if you were, I, I, I'm just not sure at this point. Um, if you were to make an anonymous, okay, so you, you don't want to declare yourself signing. I, I can understand that. But if you were to just get on the phone call and call somebody to complain to, how would it work? Who would you complain to? Currently? Yes. 
Do they want to speak to a uh, street supervisor, which they can do so on the phone, but the formal signature rate now, as it stands, would be a complaint form that you can sign and the PD has them downstairs, and that puts it on paper. But okay. it's an option that's currently there. This is a step further in that direction where they're much more formalized in that way. Hmm. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just worried that if you were to, admit, well, in this case, if you were to call somebody and you know, you're an anonymous caller and so forth and so on, that that would make it easier to dismiss rather than harder. If that makes sense. Well, I believe that from what I read in the you know uh, CPRB is that the, it is the job of the board to then look into the complaint, right? Like that is the mandate mm -hmm. that the board and you know the chief have to sit down and talk about the evidence for right. that things, and that would be on them to go about that, which is and if I misunderstand. No, 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 maybe Jack. But is there? No, I'll talk to you. Quite. I'll talk to you. You know what saying. Okay, so if somebody has a point under this proposed board, well, then the somebody board. would call up the chairman of that board or the city. I would or say the chairman. It, it's been a few days since I since I've read it again, but I think they do have to file a formal complaint in some form on paper, and I I'm not 100 percent certain, that, but I strongly believe that's the case. With who? That's a good question. That's what that's what I want to clarify. That's what I want to clarify because yeah, I I don't want to go ahead and say sure anonymous complaints are great and you know but the same person is going to answer the phone regardless and you want to do your job. Who knows what's going to happen? Right. I, I think it would make. I guess the, I don't even remember that was specified. I know we looked at. Do you remember what it said? I don't even know what it said. How? What's that? Did it say? Do you remember it saying who it had to be filed with or no? No, I just I just know that people fearing, you know, that if they report something that the police will retaliate, don't have that fear if they can report anonymously. Okay. Well those are two separate things. There's retaliation and there's ignoring. Yeah. Uh, well, and believe the current language you you guys said you read it seven times, it says more than me by the way, but <laughs> <laughs> two days ago. Seven might be a slight exaggeration, yeah. but that, that's definitely more than once. The involvement of the chief of police was pretty strong in that language for how that complaint does reach the board as well. And when you sure. think about, you know, making the analogy to FOIA, technically if you submit a FOIA request mm -hmm. to any member of the city organization, it should make its way to the FOIA officer. Yeah. So applying the same logic, if you're uh, talking to a, a member of the board that you're comfortable with, that should be an avenue for this for this board in the future. That'd okay. Be so you should be able to give it to a board member yeah. if you so choose. I don't know if that's in the language, but again, that would be a practical way of thinking about this. And now, I, I, I right on that one, and yeah, of course, the HRC can put in there. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, I, you know, I believe you're the commission to put, I recommend that at least. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that'd be wonderful if you could. I mean, that would be my recommendation. Yeah. And mine as well. Um, yeah, does it have any more? Questions and uh, don't be afraid. I'm going to, I, I got a question. So yeah. if somebody makes a complaint and they're anonymous, but more details are required, what what's the process then? What what do people do? You know, like say somebody's trying to um, investigate it, but they go like, "Hey, this is not clear, or I need more details." So from my understanding, the review board and you know anyone can fact check. Um, the review board would sit down with that person whose name would not become public. It's not like someone oh, calls someone and does nothing. The anonymity portion is that it's not a publicly accessible name and things. Like they can, the board can get together, you know, with that person and I believe the chief to talk about the details of what happened. But that board is not allowed to tell anyone else outside of the room where you know the accusing people are. So it's not that the the person isn't involved so much as the person's exposure to the person they're accusing is more limited than it would be otherwise. Because otherwise, you know, people tend to be kind of afraid to come forward yeah. to experience, you know? Yeah, I can't. Lisa, that's a question I have too, because it's like in this article that I raised your copy with, there's somebody, I, and I don't mean to interrupt, I hope it's open. <laughs> no, but, but, it, you know, but there's somebody whose last name is quoted here, his, his last name is Paycheck, I, I think that's how pronounced. Sarah Sheff Association says, 
I'm also not sure how you do an investigation on something where you don't have the name of the individual, so it's anonymous. How do you investigate that? Who do you interview? Who do you talk to? How do you know what information, if there are recordings, you know, body camera or otherwise? How do you know where to gather that information? You know, that's some of the same things that you're raising yet, but if there is a, if it's assumed that the board can actually meet, if, if, if we're trying to protect somebody's confidentiality or anonymity, but at least we have a face to face encounter. Find out when was this? Last Wednesday? Where or, you know, you know, whatever, you know some, some, we could always some, cover somebody's face, I guess, you know, like they do on Channel 2. Like okay. put a shadow there and they can talk, disguise the voice. I'm going to use two things. We're I, I don't, I'm not certain of the exact rules with, with that portion of it, but I think crime specific or the accusation specific, you have to do that. We have a victim stamp to Yeah. Yeah, so I think, I think we're kind of, I think we agree more on the definition of what anonymous means in this context. Okay. So that's good. <laughs> so, um, but, yeah, I've got yeah. another question. Sure. You mentioned about somebody's tires being slashed. Yeah. Um, that sounds kind of like a serious allegation to me, and I guess my question, well I don't guess, my question is was that recently, and did somebody make a complaint, because that's pretty serious. Fairly recently, I know they didn't make a complaint because they had no faith it would go anywhere. That's why I'm here. And I'm not, that person does not want that to be expressed, and that is not my business. But trust me when I say it's something that happened, and it's what's inspiring me to stand before you. Yeah. I, I know in... I, I say I know and from the reading that I've done, and and, and, and there's a lot more to be done. Um, when review boards have been put into place, if officer so and so is, is, is investigated, mm -hmm. there's generally there's three possible outcomes. Mm -hmm. You know, we we this board investigates somebody investigates this and so forth and say, you know, this person was way out of bounds, shouldn't have done that, and there's some sort of you know some sort of you know, disciplinary action results from that. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, I don't know. You know, he says this, she says this. You know, we don't have any, we don't have any witnesses. They it's hard to tell. Them. And that is, and and and, and, and I'm just I'll just warn you. In, mm -hmm. in, in, in those in, in when when those when affidavits are mm -hmm. filed, that happens about sixty to eighty percent of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it's it, and it's for whatever. You know, can you determine beyond a reasonable doubt? Mm -hmm. um, no, no, nobody seems to know. And the third possibility is, you know, this person made up. You know, mm -hmm. person wasn't even there, didn't do that, and so forth. This, you know, and so forth. So, yeah. But, but there is this. I mean, there is this risk, and it's a heightened risk when there are no. You know, when there isn't, any, you know, especially when there aren't witnesses, when there isn't anybody that's willing to come forward, that there's a there's a much greater risk that that the investigating body, whatever it is, is going to say, I don't know. There are for this incident in particular, and I, I mean, I don't want to belabor the point on this too much because no. it's one of many examples of not great things happening. So, which I wish didn't happen. You know what I mean? Right. I don't like the fact that I'm standing here and telling you about this. This brings me no joy in telling you this. Um, but there are multiple people that can attest to that happening, and none, like none of them, feel like it would go anywhere. And again, this is an example. You know what I mean? This isn't like this isn't the only thing I'm here. Right, right. Right. Like this is just one instance, and it's one that's perhaps you know especially concerning to highlight the severity of the reason that I'm here, which is why I brought it up in particular. If that makes sense. So like there, if you. And from talking to these people, like if you gave them an option where there was serious community input, you know what I mean, into the process that wasn't just a totally an internal investigation, which is how they're reading it now and talking to them. I'm like, I, I'm fording concerns as well. Too. This isn't just me saying this. This is no, sure. me as someone that's been in the community and talked to a lot of people about these things. Um, and, and this is you know, something that stood out of mind. There's, imagine a group of people behind me. I mean, there are also two people behind me, but I hope their tires have been slashed. They don't believe so. But you get my point. <laughs> sure. No. 
No, we're very grateful for you. Yeah, coming before us. Yeah. And I, I think about Chicago. I mean, there are a lot of um, um, misbehavior that has occurred with police officers for ages. And I can think about that house, that building that they had. And people denied it for years. Um, but it finally came out. People kept saying, oh, no, that's not what we do. That's not what we do. Uh, and eventually, I mean, it came out. This is what, this is what goes on. So um, I, I'm right now, I'm just like, I'm feeling bad that somebody's tires was like, you know. Uh, even if it, was, if it was another yeah. person, I just think that's a horrible thing. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, you know, and I, and I also understand fear. Mm -hmm. I also understand what it's like to be so intimidated um, and by the police, because these are not just regular citizens, right? These are citizens with guns. Um, that, that obviously have done damage and can do more damage. So, you know, I don't know what to say about that other than it's, it's not, you know, it's not nice to hear that. Well, in, 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 in some places, in Chicago and in others, and in other cities too, um, and I am not talking about the you know, police department. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about TV show scenarios. But um, anonymity is permitted, expressly permitted, if there's a, if there's reason to suspect that an officer is in, is is involved in a criminal exercise. I mean, you can see. I, I, let's make up a TV show. Okay, I'm not sure. You know, here's a person who's supplying drugs to a drug dealer, and uh, you know, and somebody makes a complaint about that. And you know, theoretically, the officer calls the drug dealer and says, "Somebody's complaining about you," and then that person disappears. Again, I'm not talking about you know, I'm not talking about here. I'm not talking about now. I'm just I'm, I'm just talking about those situations in other cities where anonymity no, no. is expressed and protected. Is disappearing because it's only a few of us in the room. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm from the this. <laughs> No, so, uh, where somebody would be, you know, putting themselves, when somebody would, you know, it's clear that somebody would be putting themselves at risk of retaliation. Uh -huh. Sure. Do we want to let the other two? I think we really should. For record, why are you catching me? I'm sorry. Oh, my apologies. Um, it's, uh, I don't know if I even said it. It's uh, Andrew Tillotson. It's like Andrew with an O. Well, my legal name's Andrew, for what that's worth, but I usually go by Andrew. And then uh, Tillotson, T I L L O T S O N. Thank you. You're welcome. And yeah, that's not the last two minutes. Uh, my name is Melena Grady. Um, I live at 
uh, what's called, ask the council to have put more emphasis, I guess, on the awareness of the uh, citizens review board. Um, and I do have some recommendations I can go ahead and just spit out. Uh, there's only like six of them right here, but you know, pub, uh, publicity material, brochures, some in uh, different uh, languages, uh, business cards, uh, postings, listing, uh, listing, uh, listing in the telephone directory, brochure and business cards, racks in the mayor's office, uh, an internet site. Posting uh, media, uh, sending notices of hearings to the media, placing uh, announcements on uh, newspapers, television hearings, uh, neighborhood uh, groups and other agencies, uh, mailing brochures and business cards, making uh, presentations, uh, and then uh, filing locations, providing filing form uh, at multiple locations, uh, facilitating internet filings, uh, referrals by police, posting signs in police stations, handing out oversight brochures and business cards, um, and so that's. Thank you. I, I got this. What, where is the telephone directory? I, does that still exist? <laughs> 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 oh, okay. I mean, I just haven't seen one in a long. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I imagine if you go online, it's like a telephone directory, but I just think like the phone book, like that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we can look at that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. I can be good publicity if we release a whole new phone book, but if you flip through, it's just the number for the Citizens Review Board. Just <laughs> <right>. <laughs> 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 the Slap one on the doorstep in the very house to Well, I think it, it's whatever form this eventually takes, um, I would encourage the seats. I would encourage, I would encourage, uh, you know, whatever state of are available. And I don't think that's a lot of people, but I would encourage that. Uh, there will be presentations made about this, uh, particularly in our in our in our minority communities. At, at, you know, among people of color, and it connects you on community and here, there, and elsewhere. You know, to get to get the word out so that people can have their questions answered about what it is and how it works. And students, and students as well. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of work with social service. Yeah. And can really impact the social services with them. Because we know that the heart of the social service community in the really has that root. So. Yeah, I wanted to thank you all for hearing. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, and um, the other thing is I know that this will probably be an ongoing process. You know what I mean? Like, even when it's passed and things, I know that if the need arises, um, the community will say so, right? And I thank you for always being willing to listen to community members, and again, I know I've run up on a lot of the work that was done here that you guys had to do to hash out some of the policy here, and thank you. Thank you all for coming. Yeah. Do you have any other, like, you're welcome to stay. Sure. Well, I want to ask a question before we, you know, and, and since we seem to be in part of the agenda where we, we and you're, you know, your part isn't, uh, if you want to say more, if you're sure. sitting in our conversation, please do a shot. We're at the end of the public. I wonder if there's, I, I, I wonder if there's any desire on the part of the city manager, on your part, on the part of the city council, to create any sort of a subgroup, any sort of a study group, to look at how these review boards work in other communities around around the country, and look at some models and see what we can do. I mean, I think I think going forward, I, I'd rather see this happen sooner rather than later. I'm on delay, but if, but you're a busy person. Bill Nicholas is a very busy person. Uh, you know, if, if, with all deference to the city council, this is this is. You know, they come to a meeting a couple times a month, and I don't know how much reading they do, or, you know, I know they prepare for the meetings, but how much they actually research, you know, questions, of, you know, this model, that model, and so forth and so on. And, you know, so we, we've, we've got a proposal together, and it, you know, and it was tabled, and so forth. And, and I would ask you, ask Bill, or ask, you know, or, or bring this forward, is there any interest in getting some sort of a subgroup together to, to study this and integrate that? My question of anonymity is one. And who, who answers the phone? <laughs> you know, 
or you know, uh, you know just just some 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 nuts and bolts things like that. Because I think our hearts are all in the right places, but I think we're trying to create something out of words, and it would be good to look at. One of the things that I have, um, there are, I've given a couple of fat handouts to uh, to Josh, but there is something, for instance, that's called the, uh, it has to stop. oh, okay, the National Association for Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement. Um, they've been around for a long time. They give a conference every year um, in D.C. Um, that try to answer questions about how these things work. And uh, you know, I just I just found out about this, but they have they do online seminars, you know, that run from August to October. We're in October. Um, and then they have a conference that's in in Tucson, Arizona in, in, in December. But uh no, how nice is that? Right? <laughs> but I think there's a lot we can learn, honestly. Uh, about how this works. Mm -hmm. I think we should send Lisa to Tucson. Hey, I go. I go away. I'll go away. I'll go away. <laughs> I'll go. No, I mean, who, but again, because I think otherwise, I think we make a mistake if we just give Josh more homework to do, or okay. Bill more, more homework to do, or some, you know, I, I don't think that's the way to go. It, as, it, I just want to add it, this it, as this launches. Yeah. If there's some mistake or if there's an obvious error that's surfaced as right. a result of the way it's set up. Our research here, your research, can always go to a council member, and that council member can get the second council member. You get both, and then an item's on the agenda. It's, it's, it's not like that isn't possible two months, even if it's passed. Okay. I don't know if it's going to pass in the next meeting, obviously. Sure, sure, but sure. But in the short term, it's always possible to revisit it through that avenue as more research is done into this. Well, I very much appreciate the comments that were made about people being excited about this and want to do this right. Um, I mean, because my, my, my fear, you know, to, to, to quote a cliche, is that sometimes, you know, the good is the enemy of the great, you know, or, or, or the good is the enemy of the better, you know, in that, uh, you know, if we're going to quibble so much on what it looks like, we may, I think we could. I think we. It, there's a possibility we can create something, and we will make mistakes, and we will find out what those mistakes are, and we will try to fix them. Uh, you know, that's. You agree? Yeah. And, and you know, so so I so I so I'd like to see us get something done. I don't think it's going to be perfect first run through. I don't think that's possible. Think that's possible. Yeah. I'm like, we're not. We're not asking you to make it perfect. Yeah. No, 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 no. But I'm just hoping the uh, momentum. To get it as close as perfect as possible, Absolutely. stay strong after it's passed. Absolutely. Awesome. What, what I hope is that a, 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 an aspect of this, like many things that are solidly good, because I don't, you know, I'm not saying perfection, other than my birth, of course, um, is that there's an aspect of continuous review. Yes. Right? So as we learn more, we improve the process. So the first thing that we do, you know, like the horse was the first transportation other than walking. You know, we improve, we got horse power. And so we continue to improve. I don't want to just leave it there. But I, and I'm always concerned about not doing anything because we're looking for a wonderful month. So I think that even if we start out with a, with a structure, but we're open to continuous improvement, that, that's important. Um, a question that I have, and I don't know if it's relevant or not, is how far back would people go with their complaints? You know, I'm sure nobody would go like in 1973. Um, but I, I am concerned. Have you got some literature on that? Um, I have, well, the, uh, the, board, the proposed review board doesn't have a statute of limitations. And so I asked Bill, if it doesn't have a statute of limitations, how far back can you go? And the state defines it. If the city doesn't say, then I think it's, do we have an answer? I think it was seven years or it was 10 years. But, but that's the term of, if we don't, if we, we can't make it longer, we can make it shorter, but if we don't make it anything, it's what the state says. It is. Okay. And I think it's, I think it's seven years or it's 10 years. Okay. Uh, I'm not certain of that. I mean, 
criminally, it's 18 months for misdemeanor and three years for a felony. We want that, right? that goes into policy violation or right. something that happens there. Yeah. I mean, frankly, there is, you know, a little bit of the history of these things that people might want to come forward with, you know what I mean, from past years. But like most of the things I know of are from the past, like three years, probably. I mean, a lot of them, to be quite honest, are from, you know, around the time of the, you know, the Black Lives Matter protests in DeKalb, which I know this commission is very much well aware of. So, like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I obviously don't know everything, obviously. But I don't think people are going to come back for 10 or 15 years. I just don't yeah. realistically see it happening. Because at that point, you're probably over it. Sure. And you're just resigned to nothing, it going nowhere. It's a lot of effort to report that. Kind of well, then, then, yeah. If, if, other, if other cities experience, as any guy, Usually when something like this is created, okay. there's a there's a flood at first. <laughs> there's a there's a there's a there's a backlog. Yep. You know, whether it's two years or whether it's three years or whether, uh -huh. whatever it is, there's a number and then it and it tends to drop over time. Mm -hmm. It tends to you know, there's that usually because it's yeah. the first opportunity people right. have had. I guess and so there's a line. Mm -hmm. I guess what's wrong with that? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'd see that as a success. Yeah. 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 And you can report that. Yeah. 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 And I wasn't asking as a problem. I was just asking out of curiosity. You're right. Wondering right. 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 what no that problem. meant. And thinking, I think probably about your comment when you started about a few bad apples, because if there is, this is. I mean, the bad apple. If that bad apple is still operating and working, everybody knows it. And so they're going to, if, they, if they've experienced a bad apple, this is their moment. So right. that's why I asked how far back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, may I ask, and I may be totally out, out of it because I wasn't at the last meeting, um, but what is the status of a proposed ordinance, and where did that ordinance come from? As, as it related to this? Yeah. This is. It's going to be on second reading next next meeting. Okay. It may or may not. What happens in public yeah. discussion? I don't know. I mean, the agenda is not finished yet right now. I know a little bit about it. It's a bit inappropriate for you to describe it a little bit at this point. But I think that the, there's a lot of active conversation around this still. And did the city manager's office develop the ordinance? The yes. Proposed ordinance? Yes, with the help of the city attorney. Well, one thing I think is it's important to determine for the next city council meeting when this comes up is whether the law is already in effect that says you can't insist on a sworn affidavit. Um, now, that was supposed to, you know, I've read that it was passed and that Pritzker was expected to sign it. Right. I haven't seen, I haven't been able to find anything that says, yes, Pritzker signed it on this and this and this. And, but it was supposed to happen. Pardon? I'm, I'm of your same opinion. I believe it did happen. Because I believe it did. In which case, yeah. But if it's already been state law since July first. Well, but ordinances, the statutes don't necessarily take effect upon the same. No, this said it would take effect. No, it was well. It took. It, it was passed in January. I don't know when he signed oh, it. Say, but it was supposed to go into effect July one. I think that given this conversation, the general confusion we're having, um, it might just be a good idea, you know, even if it is a state law, to just, again, officially refer. Oh, yeah. You know, state law, yeah. like, once we do figure it out, for sure. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, this is a group of very involved of individuals, and if we can't figure it out, right. I would imagine a random person would also have difficulty in figuring it out. All four of this. The attorney make sure it's no stone on dirt. Okay, thanks, so, for, thanks. thanks very much. I know Bill said something about it during the city council meeting where we expressed similar concerns, um, but frankly, Bill spends more time reading stuff like this than I do, so I didn't quite fall, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> but yeah. I know he was of the opinion that the state law would be a way to fix the issue. I believe that's the general thing that the city manager expressed. But you know that that was 
very unclear from how it's written um, in the actual agenda itself. And, 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 and just, and I don't mean to, to repeat myself, sure. but again, to muddy the waters, whatever the city council eventually passes or takes up mm -hmm. may not have this language about anonymity until that collective bargaining agreement expires, regardless of what the state law says. Right. Um, you know, it would be a matter of when that, it, 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 it wouldn't necessarily be going into effect until that contract expires. The police union contract. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, I guess we'll be back to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, do we know whether or not they have different positions? On the, they do. Excuse um, me. Whether or not they have different positions on this committee? I think there's a chair and then uh, two stated terms, correct? Yes. So four and then the chair. Yes, that's right. Oh, and then the other thing I know I was talked about previously is if we can figure out who ends up taking that call, that would be huge, because currently I, 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 read it, I didn't see that in there. I think those are the two biggest things, is who takes the call and is, on, is anonymity real? <laughs> yes. Unless they're, am I forgetting it? And then also, you know, marketing it and making sure people know about it, but I think those are, if, if we were to summarize the, the kind of ranting, the, and I refer to you both all of us loving this, is the peanut gallery is trying to impress. I think those would be the three bullet points. Andrew, um, unfortunately, it's not as um, widely known as, as it should be, but the police department started their own website a few months ago called the Cal City Police Department.com. Yeah. One of the links through there is submitting a complaint against an officer or right. a compliment for an officer. I have to imagine that finds its way to this board. Oh. And that's, you know, that's yeah. committed to record right there. Right. I mean, at the moment, I'm guessing it goes to an internal sort of thing, but that's you're saying you're going, you're imagining that yeah. that form then leads to the board instead. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. I mean, obviously you can't promise that, but right. that's what you would think. And then actually, being, making that clear in the legislation itself, like how that would go about, because there was very little on how someone would actually file the report, and maybe that's my lack of understanding on how legislation like this works, um, but should that the explicitness be something that's in there? Otherwise, how does that even function, frankly? Like, okay, you could go talk to the Supreme Court. Is it them emailing the people on the board? Is it you know, messaging on them on social media? Like, is there a formal process to do so? I, the way it's written, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I, I have no idea what you're talking Information yeah. to come. I, I don't know if ordinance is the place to list all sure. of those things. Yeah. It's code language. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's a question where, you know, for exactly questions like that, I, I, I'd like I'd like to have some sort of group will say, well, in San Diego, they do this, yes. you know, yeah, yeah, you know, or wherever it is. Um, so I think one of the like, primary tasks of what you're saying, Joe, um, could be taken by, by the CR when they mm -hmm. first for to to see which policies, which procedures work the best for that. I'm not saying we can't do it. Yeah, yeah. But you know, like fall back if if we're looking at the board to kind of make their own um, like like how we operate, you know, mm -hmm. how we operate. You know, we kind of create the CRB, I would imagine, would be similar in nature. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you know, if you're creating something from scratch, yeah. Kind of, you know. I mean, I tell you what. I just want to know, you know, again, yeah, if you would carry the story for us. If this is, if, if, if this has been tabled because Gee, I don't know. We have, don't have the answers to those questions. 
would it be useful to create some sort of a group that tries to find the answers to those questions? Uh -huh. Rather than, well, I don't know, what do you think? I don't know, what do you think? You know, that's that We could be chasing our own tail that way. Yeah, I mean, either way. Yeah, and speaking of the, you know, board for what it's worth, Land was interested in potentially joining. Um, how do you go about doing that? The um, this particular board? Yeah, this board. Oh, oh no, no, no. Uh, oh, the uh, this the, 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 uh, the nomination the, the uh, nominations would be made by the mayor. Would be made okay. by the mayor. So the and and then approved by the city council. Mm -hmm. So the surest way to do it would be to email or call up, call up Colin Barnes and say, I'm really interested in this. Uh -huh. Sure. All right. Is there any sort of stock in the, can the HRC give like a recommendation or anything like that, or is that not appropriate? Um, honestly, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if I would walk down the path of recommending one person versus yeah. the HRC okay. being in that uh -huh. position, just respectfully. I no, think that's that would be very welcome to the conversation but I would advise the HRC for me to control all people. Sounds good. That makes sense. <laughs> also, imagine we're not quite at that point yet either. So <laughs> sure, we have to make it <laughs> first. Sure. Yeah. 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 But I mean, I encourage you to do that. I encourage, I encourage you to do that. Um, I don't think. Any of us in particular think it would be a good idea to create a board of the usual suspects. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think it would be good to get some, you know, some diverse voice, voices in there. Um, at least some of them are young. <laughs> 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 uh, and, and, and may not have, may not have been on every board and committee there ever was. Um, you know, I, I, so I, I encourage you to, to talk about that. Thank you. Yeah, and then I guess you would pose the question, how would you join this board? Um, how would you go about Same it? Same thing. Same thing. Uh -huh. Same thing, yep. Cool. Is there an opening on it now? Uh, uh, I believe okay. there is. Oh, there is? I believe there is, yes. Okay. I think it's passed by the road. Is that even a sign of recovery? Was it five or ten? I think it just says seven. Yeah, it's not ten. It's not as it been ten. It was a rage, I know. When I write for you. The last time there was like okay. seven to ten, I thought. I don't know. Well, I actually just looked it up. Let me see if I can get back to it. It has been seven. I think that's fair. I think that's reasonable. 
And it may be, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Why? Yes, yes, yes. Well, well these, these uh, different organizations that I referenced and I gave you, you know, uh, you know, propose some different models and basically say, you know, if, you've got, if you're in a city of 40,000, it's not going to look the way that it looks in a city of a million. Right. Or, you know, 500,000 or whatever. So whether you do it this way, whether you do it that way, whether you do it this way, you know, there, here are some alternatives. Right. The one thing I would say, too, is that all of these review boards that exist across the country are all fairly new. Um, and so while, well, you know, I, I believe that comparing it to other ones that currently exist is, is a wonderful idea, I suppose I wouldn't be too scared to stray outside of what happens in other oh, cities sure. because oh, sure. no one knows how these go quite yet. Getting an idea definitely helps though. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm sure there will be papers and studies on the outcomes of certain ways they're built soon, but they're just, they can't exist yet. All these well, there is, um, there is an organization that I, I referenced uh, the National Association for Civilian Oversight of Laws and, 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 the, and, and the National Association for Civilian Oversight in Law Enforcement is, uh, is actually under the rubric of the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. And they've been around for about 25 years, maybe. Um, so, 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 so they can at least reference some things that that aren't entirely, you know, that have some kind of a track record. Mm -hmm. So I just looked up what you asked about our membership. Um, on the city's website, it spent between five and nine. If you come between five and nine? Yes. And we're at six. Right Why didn't you look at the legislature of the ordinance and it said Shell has seven? Mm -hmm. It says uh, the actual uh, HRC tab. Right now, it's all listed. Oh, but the ordinance actually says, now that's seven. Oh. Well, I mean, if we found something that's perfect. Unfortunately, changing. That's unfortunately how it works sometimes. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we move on? Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. It was a lifetime. Yeah. yeah. Um, One with ten landlords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, we'll do our best. Thank you very much. Yeah, and thanks again for hearing us out. All the work. The second item for discussion is the landlord tenant ordinance revisions that won't go away. Um, that you know, Larry Epperson and Norton. And Will Heinrich and Mike Hitsley and, and others you know, have been wrestling with this. God, since I was a baby. You know, it seems like a long, long time. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Larry. I'm, I, um, I know what you mean. Yeah, I didn't mean Larry. I'm, I'm glad that they have. Oh, no, 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 no. I agree. Yeah. My medicine, it comes the pain, but it does, it knows, it does my brain. But. That happens to me with my brain, too. No offense. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. But, Norton really carried us through this, and Josh as well, where we went through this. And you know, line by line, chapter and verse, and so forth. Primarily, you know, this is something that developed over a long period of time. So sometimes, in, in some older versions, this was called this, and now it's called that, etc., etc., etc. Or the same, the same paragraph would appear in three different places in the document, and so forth and so on. Um, I don't know. My hope is that, that my great hope is that. Oh, I just heard a bunch of noise, so I'm asking is that um, Yeah, I people in the lobby. Yeah, this is oh. a public meeting, so someone reporting a oh, crime okay. might be. All right. That's okay. Yeah, my great hope is that tonight you can say, 
Yeah, 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 we've gone through this enough time. Let's just like pass on it. Yeah, right. I mean, I, if you really want to go home, I mean, I'm not. I <laughs> we if you have really to want to go home it. and read it one more time, just in case, that's okay with me. So the only when I was reading through it uh, was section 1013. Okay.
Actually, I got the part in my truck. I could be there in 20 minutes, you know, or an hour, you know, whatever it is. I think it was to, I don't think it was, and I'm not saying that should be changed, but I'm right. saying I don't think, if, you know, the intent was, you know, the, the landlord can tell you in an hour that he's coming over an hour because he wants to hang out, you know, <laughs> you know or something like that. Well, I guess I just think about, and I know it's a very things but within the house of the limits, right. I understand that. But, you know, I've heard horror stories about the babies are over there, right? and you know, I just don't find that to carry over to other properties within the city limits, if that makes sense. Well, I know somewhere it says 24 hours. Maybe they just tell us that where I live. I think that's just You think so? I don't think it either. Yeah. Would you mind letting me know that? Or? Yeah, yeah. Can we put together, as we go through this, I can put together a little. Okay, this, yeah. yeah. If we want to suggest that that's. I lived in an apartment for, for eight years in, you know, bug spray. And I think they gave you two days or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. And hours, like I said, is 24 hours. Yeah. So unless, like, you know, the guy came in and told me I had a drip, although I didn't have a drip. <laughs> <laughs> I would think of it. It varies across the state. Chicago is something too. Two hours? Yeah. We're asking for 24? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what, well, that's not where we're out there. I think that's fair. The only really other way I can think, like, okay, well, why wouldn't a landlord appreciate that? And then maybe the HVAC guy suddenly canceled or something that can make the next job. And the landlord stuck trying to communicate with Josh, saying, hey, is your, is your apartment ready or open? And there's a bit of a song and dance going on about making an entry into a, an apartment. But I, I don't I don't think that this is an unreasonable request we can ask Will. Oh, that'd be fine. Yeah, I mean, it just, it, it doesn't say it can't come over. It just says you've got to ask. Right. Well, you know, hey, I can come over right now. Yeah. Well, the new paragraph, no the new paragraph three allows you to consent. And yeah. Without any okay. Period.
Um, the second one is in 10, 14. Uh, oh, it's, it's on page 10, 7. Um, and it's talking about giving notice to the tenant about withholding some of the uh, security deposit. And it says, can be, the fifth line can be delivered in person or by mail direct to the last known address. Um, and the, I looked at the state statute, and it also allows for electronic communication. So, um, so at the end of, or by mail directed to his last known address, uh, or by electronic mail. We'll just to cover that. Okay. In the middle of page 10, 8, uh, under C1, there used to be a list of uh, different people who the time was supposed to get the name, address, email, and telephone numbers. And he consolidated it. But now he doesn't need the, the I or the Roman number one. The beginning of this is no Roman number two. You said 10-8? 10-8, the page. So I'm just scrolling. Oh, 10-8 under page. page. Okay. okay. C1 under disclosure. So no, uh, no bullet point I, just part of the language? Right. Um, and instead of saying of, of the, of, well, it is the title, of the landlord is different from the property manager, I would think it of the landlord and the property manager, if any. And that's just information, contact information you're giving to the tenant. So you're deleting the colon and continuing on with the language as presented there without the I. Right. Or you can still have the colon, but. Yeah, take out the colon in this list. Thank goodness Ruth had this. She has them hidden on the server, she said. So, so don't so mess up the order. Thank you so much. So. <laughs> that was. At the bottom of that same page, it talks about a uh, unit being uninhabitable. Um, this, this is related to disclosing to the tenant existing code violations. And the last sentence on that page, if the code violation has not been fixed and the unit is unhabitable due to no heat, gas leak, running water, dangerous structural issues, etc. I'm assuming it means no running water. Uh, it's not, it's not flooded. It's not. So I suggest the uh, going to be uninhabitable due to lack of heat or running water, a gas leak, or dangerous structural Lack of heat or running water. I've already given these to uh, Josh, so he... Yep, I, uh, see that in I, I, I happen to go through this and I largely agree with what's yeah. been presented here in agreement. The only one of substance is, the, is my fifth concern. Um, one of the things that the tenants group complained about two or three years ago when we started this was that landlords were towing for failure to pay them. And the landlords that we met with have indicated that they would prefer that not be 
that we not cover towing. Um, oh. I, I still believe that towing for the non-payment of rent should not be allowed. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, Why do they think we should cover towing? They like to hold down and invent that they need to use it? Well, the example that he gave
that we're talking about right now. I, it, it sounded to me like Lisa was motioning what Larry yeah, was yeah, prompting said. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, well, if you. I think I got it. I think this was well, through the. Uh, okay, I got that. Yeah, thank you. So, then, what we can do is include that and in, um, forward it to our city attorney for yeah. language review. Well, we still need a motion. We still need a motion to, to recommend all the changes that yes. are in yellow. Plus what I Well, we can do that when we get to the end. Well, you, got, you, got, you said you had six. That was five. I thought you'd say had five. Oh, maybe you have five. Okay. Well, all right. Well, then I will entertain a motion that we... Uh, well, I got one thing. Yes. But I did hear him say, you said somebody's going to look at it for language. Yes, thank you. Um, Timeline-wise, I think we need to get this to the city attorney so if he makes corrections to it, we bring it back in November, and then we make a true motion to send it to council for recognition. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I have a question about uh, language under 1014, and I know y'all probably like this here and had this thing, but Mr. Hasn't necessarily looked at it. Uh, it says kids. So that's kind of gender laden language. Are we using that? Is no, that just. No, we, no. We, we pulled a lot of that out. We okay. That. Yeah, we under 1014, under security deposits? I yeah, thought it was under. Yeah. yeah, Jordan read it. I wasn't even. One, two, three, four, fifth line. Yeah, where I where I recommend that we also yeah. add electronic. It says his number. Correct. You see it on page ten seven. Oh, ten seven. Okay. Go so there. No, it says his. Oh, do I want there? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. His, her, there. Um, what line are we in? I'm sorry. Five and fifth. How many do we include? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, how many covers everyone? Right. Well, what covers it? There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you could say the Well, Josh, is that how we nor they, you normally do it, as opposed to a commission making a recommendation? No, my understanding is that and the council by the city manager referring it to. My, well, my understanding of that is that if, if we have a consensus on something like what's presented here, we, I can just say, hey, Matt, um, take a look at this, please, and then get back to me. We can right. have a final document where. Uh, because we're taking formal action on something in motion, would that be required? Yeah. That, that, that's my understanding. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Next month, we'll come back and approve this thing. I'm buying it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>